I think the American people are ready for new blood, fresh faces. The Democrats let Biden run in 2020 as a sort of lifetime achievement award. And there was no one else in the primary who had a chance, like Buttigieg, you know, President Buttigieg, are you kidding me? So Biden was all the Democrats had in 2020. I think there's more options for them in 2024 because people like to be wooed. Yeah, that's just the way it is. And Biden's not wooing anyone, which is why I think there's a lane for the governor of California, Gavin Newsom, to come in. He sure wants it. And he's, uh, he's young. He's in his 40s, he's hip, he's fresh, he's cool. I mean, look at him, here he is walking into the White House. Right? He was in DC a couple months ago to accept some education award, which by the way, we have one of the worst education systems in the country here in California. But the award was based off of uh, uh, spending on anti-racist initiatives and critical race theory, and we do a lot of that. So he won this award. Anyway, he went to DC to get it, and Biden wasn't, he wasn't there, he wasn't in town. So Newsom was there at the White House, rolling in with his coat off, sleeves rolled up, like he owns the place, strutting around in the backyard, like he's, uh, he's had a hard day of work at the office, in the Oval Office. And he's like walking in, you know, he's doing the three finger wave, like, oh, hey, press, hey, what's up, hey, oh, you know, right, the whole thing, right? And I think people like that. People want that excitement. They want the, the, the cool guy running for the White House again, because that's just how stupid our country is. I agree with an article written the other day by Jim Garrity, and he marks the moment when politics became unbearable in America, and he marks it as 1992. Why 1992? What happened in 1992? That is when MTV decided to rock the vote. Remember rock the vote? So rock the vote started by this music industry guy in 1990 to push back against this uh, censorship fight in DC. They wanted to put the, you know, the uh, like labels on, Dis, uh, CDs, I guess it would have been back then, right? Like a parental advisory, something. Like so there's this music guy, uh, music executive guy who's like, no, no, we don't want that anymore. We're going to rock the vote. That was 1990. And they were pretty successful with that. So they decided to keep this party going to the presidential election in 1992. And the goal was to, well, Jim Garrity put it, he said, uh, the goal is to persuade young voters to take a break from obsessing over Mariah Carey and boys to men and actually care about voting for Bill Clinton. So the kids of 1992, the young people, had a choice between an old World War II veteran geezer, George Bush, an old fogey, George Bush, or the cool guy who played the saxophone on Arsenio Hall. Do you remember this? <laughs> Oh, he is presidential material. I just want to have a beer with that guy. He'd make a great president. We are an idiocracy. And 1992 was a turning point. Now, I got to make this note. I was, I was thinking of examples of, of Bill Clinton as the cool guy in 92, and it was that moment. And then there was also the moment on MTV when he was asked, do you prefer boxers or briefs? Do you remember this? I remember, I have a vision of what this moment looked like. So I was like, okay, I got to find it. So I looked on the internet. It's not there. Doesn't exist. The moment does not exist. You cannot find it. Please go look for it. It was 1994, Bill Clinton, MTV. Do you prefer boxers or briefs? He said, usually briefs. And, I, and he's like, I can't believe I said that or something like that. Does not exist on the internet. The, the forum is there. The event is on, online, but they scrubbed that moment. It's gone. Isn't that unbelievable? What's, an, what's another moment, like a pivotal moment, a pivotal pop culture moment in our recent history that does not exist on the internet? Can you think of any of them? But that one doesn't exist? Please go, I, like, go and try to find it. Do you prefer boxes or briefs? They asked Bill Clinton. You remember that, right? I'm not making it up. There, there is online a video of him at some event, uh, it was like the White House press correspondence dinner or something, making fun of that moment. So he admits that that moment exists. So I'm not crazy. That moment existed. It happened, but there's no video of it anywhere on the internet. That's unbelievable to me that that could be scrubbed from the internet. But we'll save that for another special about, uh, you know, the powers that be controlling what you can see. That's just a pure propaganda that that doesn't exist. It's unbelievable. But anyway, the point here is uh, this was the moment when to be, it's one thing to be charismatic and it's one thing to be entertaining, but it's another to turn politics into something that is supposed to be entertaining as if that's the purpose of it. 
there's plenty of means of entertainment. You got sports, television shows, superhero movies, video games, whatever. Politics should not be one of those entertaining things. It just shouldn't be. And now all these politicians are, are flooding TikTok. And the last election was all TikTok. Like how pathetic. How absolutely. Check out this TikTok. This is a TikTok from uh, some Democrat running for Congress in Florida. Be the shit if I really claim you. Hey, are you registered to vote? There's a primary on August 23rd and the general election November 8th. Wait, come back. Wait. Okay, so you go, right? And it's just like all that. There's a funny, oh, I should have found it here. There's a funny clip of Rand Paul when he was running for president. And it was, I guess it was 2016. And he said, uh, he was doing a TikTok or something. And he's like, this is stupid. I don't know why I'm doing this. <laughs> but I guess they told me I have to. So here I am making a dumb TikTok. Uh, but anyway, I wanted to play that one because LA Times wrote an article about that TikTok in particular. And they interviewed an 18 year old college student, Caltech Long Beach, or Cal, Long, Cal State Long Beach, right? And uh, they, they get, the student said, yeah, I think it's great. He was like, all right, listen, this is when the election's coming up, vote now, boom. That's all the information I need. That, that's, all, that's all the information you need? <laughs> that's, that's it? That's all of it? Low information voter, as we talked about in the first segment. That's all I need is the elections coming up. Eight seconds. Half of it, some thirst trap, and the rest of it, some Democrat. That's all the information I need. I get it. And it fits into one of my pet peeves when everyone says, get out and vote. Everyone needs to vote. No, 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 no. Not everyone needs to vote. Very few people actually need to vote. Very few. Most people don't even know how many states there are, let alone the intricacies of legislation. Most people are idiots. We need way fewer people voting. And we don't need politicians to be entertaining. It's okay for politics to be boring. But because of that rock the vote mentality, we still, have, oh, by the way, Diddy, uh, I remember P. Diddy amped it up in 2004. Uh, it was rock the vote and he turned it into vote or die. <laughs> All right, so the point is there's this mentality that politics should be entertaining and it has led us to vote for entertainers. Trump was a reality TV star. 14 seasons on The Apprentice for the love of Pete. That was training people every Thursday night at eight o'clock on NBC, training people's minds of thinking that Donald Trump is the ultimate decision maker in his leather chair and his massive made for TV boardroom. And then, so he was entertaining, he's an entertainer first. And then at the debate, he called Rosie O'Donnell a fat pig and said Hillary Clinton should go to jail. Trump was fun. People loved it. And the Democrats want that too. They wanna to have some fun. They wanna be entertained. Biden is not entertaining. But someone from California, like a Gavin Newsom, he's cool. Cool enough, I guess. Cooler than Biden. So we'll see how hard the Dems push him out in these next two years. And we'll see if the House caves or holds strong for these final two years and these hopefully uh, Biden's 51st and final years in Washington, D.C. Hey, thanks for watching that clip. That was from our special about the, the first two years of the Joe Biden presidency and just reflecting on all the failures. If you feel uh, hopeless about the moment and about what's next, if I can forward you to our podcast, it's called Politics by Faith. And this is the premise of the podcast is we take these moments of anxiety and hopelessness and we, we find what is good and true. And you leave that feeling very good, I assure you. So if you can download that podcast and, and give it a chance and check it out, it's called Politics by Faith. Anywhere you download, listen to podcasts.